Welcome to another edition of the Front Row Roundtable show presented by Ralphie's. Happy New Year to everybody. Hope your holidays were terrific. Uh, joining me again this week, Big John Melkowski, St. John's Radio Network. And uh, back again, Mr. the one and only Mr. Steve Taylor, 106.5 The Ticket. Now, thanks for having me again, Norm. Yeah, All absolutely. Right. It's fun, buddy. It's the only time I see you. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> Unless we're doing a game. Right. Unless we're doing a game. All right. God, we got so much stuff I want to get into. Uh, but uh, a big thanks to uh, uh, Mark Wallace and Ralphie's uh, for being a sponsor throughout this past year. And, uh, and uh, actually a major sponsor. Appreciate that very much. Uh, and also... Uh, Mike Seeger, uh, Red Wing Shoes on Reynolds Road near Bancroft. A big thanks to them as well. And uh, always uh, make sure that you say hi and from us that you heard it here. And we're always looking for sponsors because we want to keep this stuff going. So uh, you can get a hold of me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or if you have my number, just <laughs> Give me a call. We'll chat. All right, let's uh, let's start it off uh, with uh, college football, and we're uh, down to just about the end. The championship game is coming up on Monday night: Alabama against Clemson. And uh, of course, everybody watched all the bowl games, right? Uh, the important ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, not everybody attended the bowl no, games. No. They never do. I think attendance has been awful. You looked at a lot of these games, and, and you could uh, pick your own section. <laughs> and uh, even, the, even the larger games, it was obvious when you saw a crowd shot, you didn't see too many of them that, it, that they weren't sold out. Now, this game coming up on Monday night, which is out in California, it's Alabama and Clemson out in California, <laughs> which makes all kinds of sense. But a uh, story done on uh, Yahoo Sports, Dan Wetzel used to come on the old radio show, uh, said that uh, you could get in for 150 bucks, which last year at, at its peak, it was 1700 to get into the championship game. What's going on? A lot of it is familiarity with the two teams and expectations because a lot of this is the matchup we've expected to see all along, right, John? Oh, absolutely. You know? So you know, there's no surprises there. So you know, I could I could see that. Well, I, I think a lot of it is. I mean, these fans have traveled from the same two teams, have played four years in a row in the championship game, have maybe traveled all over the place to one or the other. You, you know, and and they just. You can't afford it. I mean, you, you run out of money. And they just traveled to wherever it was ten days beforehand to go play in the first, the semifinal, and now you want them to travel all the way across country and do it again. I just, I think people are getting tired of it. Yeah, you got nine days in between games, and and how long did you have between the end of the season and the first playoff game? It, Five weeks. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. And therein lies your problem with a lot of these teams, and then even with a lot of the. the Students skipping these bowl games, electing to skip bowl games. I mean, you know, when we were coming up, because they don't mean anything. That's where I'm going with this. Exactly. You're right. You're right. You know, they don't mean anything. And and the silliest stuff that I saw on social media was beginning to argue against actually playing games on the field. No, I, I, I mean, I, I think because a lot of people are saying, well, why do we want an expanded playoff? We're getting the same two teams. Well, an expanded playoff, at least you might get some exciting games that mean something. I mean, the two games on Saturday were dogs. Well, we knew it was going to happen. Uh, Stevie Wonder could see that coming a mile <laughs> away. You know, you know, the the fact of the matter is, we have two elite programs that are on the same same level, and then we've got a handful of other teams that are on that tier two. And then everybody else, and that's the fact of the matter. That's what we're, that's the hand we're dealt with. Clemson's awfully young too. Oh yeah. I, what, what was it like sixty some percent? Sixty percent of the team freshmen or sophomores. Or freshmen or sophomores. Yeah. And, 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 wow. And here's the thing that no one's talking about because Dabo Sweeney foresaw this, and he said last year we can't beat Alabama with. Kelly Bryant, you know, I, I got to get off of this train. Yep. So he brought in Sunshine, because that kid looks just like Sunshine <laughs> from Mary the Titans. He brought in Sunshine, and, and everything's been Sunshine ever since, you know, and, and they let him learn, and, and that kid was stellar against Notre Dame. He was stellar. Do you think part of the recruiting pitch for Alabama and Clemson is if you want to get into this tournament? You have to come to our school. That's it. That's it. The sunshine said it itself. He said, I knew we were going to play them. He said, I knew I was going to have to play them guys sooner or later. It was just a matter of when. 
Well, and and I, you, you look at guys like Jalen Hurts, who could have and probably should have transferred this year, but he, he stuck around. He knew he wasn't going to be the starter. I mean, Nick Saban could say all he wants about, you know, well, we'll let you compete for it. There was no competing. Everybody knew Tua was going to be the starter. Was it pretty obvious to everybody that in the Texas-Georgia game, Georgia didn't really care? Did, did you get out of that? I mean, come on. They didn't <laughs> come out fired up or anything to be there to play a 15th-ranked Texas. No, but if you're going to be tweeting all day Saturday and Sunday about how you should have been in the, in the semifinals. They show up. And then you come out and lay an egg like that, you, you can't do that. Because they're 19, 20, 21-year-olds. That's the kind of stuff that happens. You're not in the big tournament, so it's, oh, well, it's a bowl yeah, but game. A, but Ohio State came out in the Rose Bowl. But and proved they, well, you knew they were going to come had, out a purpose. Yeah, they had a purpose. And, and, and the thing about them, you know, I, we talked about this on, 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 on one of my shows, was how the kids from Michigan said, look, I'm not playing. I'm not playing in this game. But everybody from Ohio State played. Everybody played. Everybody that declared, and it's and it's a whole got a lot of guys that's going to get drafted. Uh, well, well, Nick was hurt, but yeah. but other than the Nick, everybody else played, and everybody's going to they're probably going to get drafted higher than those Michigan kids. Uh, some of the Michigan guys surprised me. I mean, the Kron Higdon surprised me that he didn't play because um, I, I didn't see him as a a really high pick. I mean, I'd, and and I guess any pick is guaranteed money. Right. And, you know, if you're going to get picked at all. But yeah, and I, but I think that's going to be the future. Is and and I the Rose Bowl is is totally different. I mean, talk about none of these games meaning anything except for the semifinals. The Rose Bowl is still different. The Rose Bowl still means something just because it is the Rose Bowl. I mean, everybody says it. You know, if if you grew least it up, does to the Big Ten and the Pac. And, and, and if you 12, grew up in so. Big Tw- Big Ten or or Pac twelve or Pac ten country, you want to play in the Rose Bowl. So that does mean something. The Peach Bowl, who cares? I wanted uh, a little bit about Urban Meyer, which (laughs) watching the social media hatred come out after that game was uh, (laughs) not unexpected. Um, And everybody's like, oh, he's going to take a job tomorrow and he's going to go to, you know, where he's going to go to USC when it opens up and blah, blah. (sighs) I will never say never that somebody can't come back and coach. But if I think if he comes back, and coaches, there's only two places. One, it's back at Ohio State, or it's Notre Dame. I think that's it. I think beyond that, nothing else makes sense. Ohio State was a dream job for him, and I can see if, let's say, here's a scenario. He told me when he was back at Bowling Green, he said, I got uh, three jobs that I, I it, they were Ohio State, Michigan, and Notre Dame. There's no way he goes to Michigan after spending all this time in Ohio State. Right. Notre Dame is the only other one I could say. But let's just say, and knock on wood for Buckeye fan, this doesn't happen, but let's just say Ryan Day struggles two years down the road. Yeah. I could see him coming back and writing the ship. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I, I don't think he's done. I, I think he'd, if it's not in college, I, I think he, I mean, the NFL is going to be all over him trying to get, it, get him to, to come up, up there. You know what he said about the NFL? You could never coach the NFL because if you lose five or six games, it's considered a successful season. (laughs) (laughs) And losses kill the guy, kill the guy. We got to take a time out. Uh, We're going to dive into NFL. We got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about when we come back. It's Front Row Roundtable Show presented by Ralphie's. Mortgage Marty here. We hear every day here at Fairway how tight the housing market is, how there's just so few great homes out there. And I want to remind everybody, we have a fantastic suite of renovation products. They are basically designed where you can buy a house, borrow extra money over and above the sale price, uh, get contractors lined up, and we pay them after closing. So the work is done after closing. You get to pick who you're going to use, and you can buy that house, fix it up, and create what you want. Um, with as tight as the market is right now, in fact, I have probably a half a dozen customers who are to the point where they're so frustrated they're about to give up. So just think renovation loan. 
It's February Fury as Powerbomb Wrestling is back in action in Toledo on Sunday, February the 10th at 5 p.m. at St. Clemens Hall, 2990 Tremainsville Road. Unchained Brandon Day defends the heavyweight title against former champion the amazing Nate Matson. Also, Madman Fulton, the Circus of Pain, Sexy Sean Casey, Malice, Ben Boone, Queen Aminata, and more in action. Get your advanced discount tickets right now at pbwexcitement.com. It's coming up February the 10th. It's Powerbomb Wrestling. All right, back we are in the Front Row Roundtable show presented by Ralphie's. All right, a, a couple of NFL playoff games were today before we had taped, which were uh, Indian Houston, Seattle, and Dallas. Uh, we'll get to the ones coming up tomorrow in, uh, in just a little bit. But uh, season ended and not on a good note for a lot of teams that have a lot of local interest here. Uh, I want to I start out with the Lions, who... Um, Jim Bob Cooter gone, offensive coordinator. Coach is going to stay. He's only been, only, only been there one year. Right. But um, did it ever occur to anybody that maybe it's not all the guys that are around, are around Matthew Stafford, <laughs> that maybe Matthew Stafford has a lot to do with this? I mean, he, he, uh, you can't say he hasn't had weapons along the way. Had Calvin Johnson, had Golden Tate. He's had a, he's had a number of guys, and the results are always the same. Matt Prater can find open guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Well, and, and the difference was this year they added a running game. Carry on, well, at least when Carry on Johnson was healthy, yeah. he was a decent running back. Right. Um, I think a lot with the Lions was the <clears throat> the emotion of them trading away Golden Tate because. That just left. I mean, you had these three wide receivers. Everybody's talking about how much they can pass for and stuff. And then you trade one of your your main clubhouse guys, and they kind of fell off from there. Because I mean, they were an, an okay team up until then, at least stats wise or standings wise. I think they had to get touches for those young kids like Carry On Johnson and Kenny Galladay. So Golden Tate was the fall guy. You know, but saying that, I think it's more so an identity crisis with the Detroit Lions because what Matt Patricia is trying to adopt is the New England Patriots here in the North, and that's not going to work. Bill, uh, uh, the, the, the guy in uh, Texas, tried to do the same thing. You got to have your own identity. Well, you, you look at that Belichick coaching tree, and it's it's pretty barren. It's not there, very. You, you don't hear a lot of people <laughs> come, but everybody wants to talk to him. You know, Josh McDaniels and our man kids. I, you know. I love this though. The top six highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. Aaron Rodgers, 33 and a half mil. Matt Ryan, 30 mil. Kirk Cousins, 28 mil. Garoppolo, 27.5. Stafford, 27. Derek Carr, 25. Yep. How many in the playoffs? All of them at home. None. <laughs> All of them at home. None. None of them are in the playoffs. And the, meanwhile, ones, and the ones that are on? Meanwhile, quarterbacks that have rookie deals, six of them. Jared Goff, Trubisky from the Bears, Watson, Prescott, Lamar Jackson from Baltimore, and Patrick Mahomes. So what does that tell you the NFL is going to? Is this a is this a is this a fluke? Or no, but, something else working here. But I mean you can even throw in there Tom Brady. Because Brady takes pay cuts, he reworks his contract. He's not in the top six, you know. Nope. Would you rather have have those guys or would you rather rather have Tom Brady? You know, Brady versus Derek Carr, Brady versus Stafford. Brady is so, so team first. And, and it's not like they even use that money and put a lot of weapons around and that's him. In the prop, you know uh, what, he, he, right. he keeps taking discounts. For what? And, and they still, he's still throwing to, to guys who are just cast off from everyone Name else. me his top receivers. See, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> It, that's my point. You know, you know, New England is saving. At some point, they're going to have to push some chips into the center of the table and bring somebody in to try to help this guy because this guy is thrown in eight games. In eight games, that's half of the games that he's played. He's thrown one or less touchdowns, okay? So that's not top five. You know, that's not, and I don't care who he's beaten along the way. I know who he's lost to along the right. way, you know? You know, and, and that's got to you know, be frustrating if you're a Tom Brady. 
Uh, I don't think so. He's, he's still been dating. What's he got to be rings? frustrated about? He's got how many rings? He's married to Giselle Bunchen. I mean. <laughs> and and I'm sure he gets plenty off of endorsements. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think he's you know living paycheck to paycheck. No, and no. I'm not saying. Eating ramen. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not saying that. But when you're seeing other teams that are bringing in weapons, you know, Dallas goes out and get an Amari Cooper for. Uh, Dak Prescott because it was a need. You know, teams going out filling needs. Well, in New England, there's a need because, see, Brandon Cooks isn't there. He ain't walking through those, that door anymore. You know, uh, the kid that went to Miami, he, he ain't coming through the door anymore. And Gronkowski, is, he's getting old. What's he going to do? Just saying. Polish up the Super Bowl rings. <laughs> uh, as of uh, our taping here, the Browns have not hired a head football coach. How do you not give it to Greg Williams? I don't know. I mean, if that's the guy that the that the club the the team wants and the players want, I don't know how you don't. I mean, they played so well in those games. He went games. five and three after Hugh Jackson went three thirty six and one. <laughs> How do you not give it to him? Yeah, I mean, he and Freddie Kitchens is the is the offensive coordinator. I don't know how you just don't hand him the contract. And I mean, I understand kicking the tires, but what's taking so long? <laughs> you know, I mean, you got to look around. You get a feeling they're going to screw this up. I mean, <laughs> don't call Adam Gase. <laughs> <laughs> the only one I can see is Mike McCarthy. I think he's. And why is um, what has Mike McCarthy done? He won a Super Bowl then, but the NFL is, is it stands for no. It's NFL, not for long. What have you done for me lately? Yeah, but he's another one. He, he I mean, he didn't. Have, he never had any pieces other than Aaron Rodgers. Well, there's Marvin Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sixteen years, seven playoffers, lost all the all the first round games. Um, how does Hugh Jackson get? <laughs> Interviewed. That's, How's that happen? That's Marvin's boy. That's my because you gotta realize. Can you imagine? You gotta realize. Cincinnati's best season, they were twelve and four. Who was the offensive coordinator? Now, and that's I'm what not he's good at. Questioning <laughs> him as a coordinator. I saw him as a head coach as being a Raiders fan. <laughs> Uh, yeah, first up close and personal. It's, uh, it, it's just recycling guys. I mean, it's, it's why why is Josh McDaniels getting looks again? I mean, he went to the went to the Broncos and traded up to get Tim Tebow. I mean, that that's all you need to know. I, and he left there and he went to the Rams. Now I don't know if you know this, John, but I've been a Ram fan since I was seven years old. <laughs> okay, and I saw how that thing ended. Okay, it didn't end well. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, and, then, and, and Josh McDaniels, just look at the job he turned down last year. That Colts job. Yep. That Colts job is looking pretty good with it. They've got $100 million to spend next year, and they've got three picks in the top 34. Yep. <laughs> and he turned it down, walked away. It's looking pretty good now. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good now. All right, uh, we're going to take a time out. We're going to talk more NFL. I want to get into uh, the Steelers situation, too, uh, before we get on out of here. Front Row Roundtable Show presented by Ralphie's. Mortgage Marty here. We hear every day here at Fairway how tight the housing market is, how there's just so few great homes out there. And I want to remind everybody, we have a fantastic suite of renovation products. They are basically designed where you can buy a house, borrow extra money over and above the sale price, uh, get contractors lined up, and we pay them after closing. So the work is done after closing. You get to pick who you're going to use, and you can buy that house, fix it up, and create what you want. Uh, with as tight as the market is right now, in fact, I have probably a half a dozen customers who are to the point where they're so frustrated they're about to give up. So just think renovation loan. It's February Fury as Powerbomb Wrestling is back in action in Toledo on Sunday, February the 10th at 5 p.m. at St. Clemens Hall, 2990 Tremainsville Road. Unchained Brandon Day defends the heavyweight title against former champion the amazing Nate Matson. Also, Madman Fulton, the Circus of Pain, Sexy Sean Casey, Malice, Ben Boone, Queen Aminata, and more in action. 
Get your advanced discount tickets right now at pbwexcitement.com. It's coming up February the 10th. It's Power Bomb Wrestling. And welcome back. We're on the Front Row Roundtable show presented by Ralphie's. Uh, I'm Norm Waymer, Big John Malkowski, the one and only Steve Taylor. All right, um, we've been talking about, uh, I promised we were going to talk about the Steelers who missed the playoffs. It, it, this is funny how this works because all the Browns fans, they go 7-8-1 and one, and it's <laughs> euphoria. Uh, the Browns go, uh, or the Steelers go 9-6-1, and one, miss the playoffs, and it, everything's coming crashing the down. The world. Be careful what you ask for. Antonio Brown, the only guy in the last, what, five years? That's had uh, more than 100 catches in five or six years. Yeah. And how many headaches have you brought that steel organization? You know, it's funny. Ryan Clark told a story. He was, he was in his last year with the Steelers, and they were just talking about giving Antonio that money. And he, Antonio hadn't signed yet. And he's screaming at the defense, don't touch me, I'm the franchise. Don't you know I'm the franchise? And Ryan Clark said, you better watch out, guys. And so now, you know, they made that bed. <laughs> they got to lay in it. <laughs> well, uh, there's, I mean, there's something going on because that team was so talented. They were fourth in total offense, sixth in total defense, playing in a division with, that was quarterbacked by two, two, rookies. two rookies and Jeff Driscoll and still couldn't make the playoffs? Uh, I mean, there, there's something, and, and, you know, and I, I think, I mean, I know the Roonies don't like changing coaches, and Mike Tomlin's been successful, but he's losing that team, in my opinion. See, the Antonio Brown thing, I think, is a complex situation because uh, he's, not the, he's not the first diva wide receiver by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, as a coach, you've got to figure out a way to make it work. I mean, you just do. Or, you, or, or, you know, if you cast him off, you're going to leave a, a, just a gigantic hole in well, your offense. Not necessarily. They've done it before. Their MO have done it before. Randall L., they let him go. He was supposed to have been the guy that, you know, they, they replaced him. After, after Heinz Ward, they replaced Randall him. Randall L.'s no Antonio Brown. I, I'm just saying that number Wallace. one, the number of white models getting there, Mike Wallace, uh, Emmanuel Sanders, they've done this before. And then, they, oh, by the way, they've got a guy there that's just ready to be a number one. And the team voted him. Don't you find it funny, John, that, that Antonio Brown throws this tampton once the team votes Juju Smith, <laughs> the team MVP. Well, then move him. I, I, I think you have to. With it. I, I think. I mean, you've already moved away from Le Le'Veon Bell, and, and James Conner came in and had a fine season. Almost exact same. Yeah, I mean, season it, Le Le Le'Veon Bell had the previous year, except he scored more touchdowns. The, the running back combo. Did. Yeah, and, and, he, and he got. I mean, he was hurt the last couple weeks, and, and but but even then, um, Jalen Samuels, he had good games. Let me ask you this. If Le'Veon Bell is there, do Pittsburgh make the playoffs? No, I don't think it would be any different. What do you think? I don't think it would be any different. They would be in the playoffs, hands down. Because the hiccups that they had, they wouldn't have had with, with Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell. Let's get into what Ben Roethlisberger said. <laughs> this sounds like what, what Big Ben had to say. Okay. That the, uh, that the uh, controversy over Le'Veon Bell was a distraction that caused them to miss the playoffs. When before the announcement that he wasn't going to play, you know, before that deadline, they were seven two and one. After it was settled, they went two and four. Well, and I think some of that is the the chemistry of the team, I, because the, I mean, the story I heard was that that time passed and he didn't sign, so he wasn't going to play. The, those guys raided his locker. Took all of his stuff that was in his locker, the shoes and the, you know, sweats and all that stuff, and you know, doled them out, gave them out to everybody they wanted to, and uh, I mean, th there had to be people on that team who were Le'Veon supporters. Doesn't that make Roethlisberger a finger pointer, though? But he is he what he is. Yeah, right. He ain't changed. I mean, this is a guy the last three years has been saying, I don't know if I'm going to play anymore. I, I want to retire, and 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 he's the same guy that said, you know. I should have thrown Juju more passes. If I'd have known that, I'd have thrown Juju more passes. How do you think that made Antonio Brown feel? That's probably why he threw a football at his head last <laughs> week in practice. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, Antonio Brown is obviously in the wrong, too. I mean, you you can't get all – I mean, you can get upset. I understand that. But to throw a football at the, at the franchise quarterback and then not show up for Saturday's walkthrough and practice – and then just come in Sunday and expect, you know, hey, I'm going to walk onto the field and play. Well, no, have your agent call a coach like having your parents <laughs> call a teacher. That's what he did. He had his agent call a coach and say, you know, coach, you know, hey, Antonio's feeling good. He'll be able to go. And Mike Tomlin, to his credit, said, oh, this is not how this works. But I'd be interested in talking to Antonio. So Antonio shows up. And the problem that I would have if I was still an organization starting up at the top is he was supposed to be there support to support his brothers, and he left at halftime. I have a problem with that. Yeah, that's... That's not. I mean, all those all those factors. I mean, just what happened those last three days. I don't think there's any way he can be a Steeler next year. All right, the games tomorrow, playoff games tomorrow. The Chargers at the Ravens, Philadelphia at Chicago, and I wanted to mention this too. TV uh, ratings for the NFL were up five percent this year. Streaming of the NFL was up eighty six percent, and I think that that has more to do with the technology that does anything else, but. Uh, I think when this we were talking about college football and how I think interest uh, interest is waning somewhat in college football. I mean, you got a long way to, to wane. NFL is not the case, and the the four games this weekend. This I think this is part of the reason. The four games this weekend, the point spreads one and a half, one and a half, two and a half, and the Philadelphia Chicago games five and a half. You don't know who's going to win week to week in the NFL. And that's what it's all about. That's yep. what they wanted, parity. Because the things that change, the 12 teams that are in this year, half of them teams ain't going to be in next year. Half of them weren't in last year. Right. Uh, they're brand new. It's just, that's just how they're in it. That's the new NFL. Is that bad? No, no, it's not. Because two years ago, I was a Ram fan that was cheering for a 4 and 12 team. <laughs> you know, now look. Well, they're on a bye. Unless, unless you're the Lions who can't seem to be in that half that move into the playoffs and, you know, move up. But <laughs> Or the Bengals or the Browns or, you know, any of our local teams. But, I, you know, I go back to a point that I made over and over and over again. There is not a lot of difference between these teams in the NFL. There just isn't. No. There, and there, there's not. And, and, and I mean, it, it'll be interesting. I, you know, the, I, to me, the Chargers-Ravens game is really interesting because I, I think it's the first team to get a second look at Lamar Jackson. That, that's going to be interesting. But to me, the interesting game is going to be the Philadelphia Eagles going to Soldier Field because I think that that's a team that's equipped to go to Soldier Field and deal with that with all of the distractions and everything that they're going to have to deal with and actually win the game. Yeah. I won't, I, if I was a betting man, I like those numbers. Five yeah, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> amazing although, to me. That that's although the, the Ohio biggest. State Washington game, <laughs> that number was five, five and, and a half. half. <laughs> <laughs> and then when it was 28 to three, I was like, well, this one was easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 28, 23. Yeah. Another reason why I don't yeah. wait to drink. He just knows what they're doing. Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> Guys, I appreciate it very much. Anytime, Anytime. man. You just, yeah, you got to Glad to be back. <laughs> yep, we all survived New Year's. <laughs> so, all right, uh, we'll be back next. Hopefully, we'll have Marty back next week. We, will, we shall see. Uh, he but, might uh, be sick, man. Uh, you know. Farm <laughs> Wrestling, <laughs> Wrestling coming up here uh, at 2 a.m. Saturday Night Live is next. We'll see you next week here on the Front Row Roundtable Show, presented by Ralphie's.